Let's go shopping. Together over the past 12 years and that's his full list of diagnoses. Um, somebody stopped by today, Diana and her husband, Sean, stopped by today and just gave me, just gave Josh and I like, they're very sweet and just, we're basically like, we just wanna stop by and tell you that we're proud of you and you're inspiring and keep going. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're gonna to be discussing the Doctor D Dozen again today. You guys really like me covering them. And it always seems that there's always just a little bit more information, just a little bit more to see from through the cracks here. Okay, okay, so I'm actually gonna split this video into two different sections. One of which is uh, Alicia oversharing about her kids' medical issues and the safety issues which are going on. And then the second half is gonna be like her shopping uh, continuously again, the shopping and all of this kind of stuff. So it's very much split in the middle. So if you think I'm extra nitpicky with the shopping, just carry on watching for this first little bit because some of the information that has recently been coming out about Alicia with her oversharing is just absolutely mind boggling and it just continues to happen. And the second half of it is gonna be mostly like a little, it's like a follow up from my last video where I was saying that she was basically stockpiling a load of snacks. I had some really good conversations with quite a lot of you and point taken yeah there are definitely some areas in the world not just in the states but in the world where you might need to stock up on certain types of things because maybe produce isn't as rich in some areas in different times of the month so i have taken that on board and i have slowly realized that actually maybe i still i still personally think that that much stockpiling of snacks is obsessive i do also think that she didn't need to buy all of those extras when she had the amount already in her pantry. I get that, but I also have been enlightened to the fact that maybe there are some areas, different parts of the world that think of stocking up differently to the way that we do in the UK, okay? So I've taken that on board, I've had some good conversations and I can accept that maybe, maybe I went a bit too hard on the stockpiling, okay? Maybe I went a bit too hard, I'm sorry. I will live and learn from it. I will live and learn. Okay, we all make mistakes, but I do per I do personally think that she does definitely have some sort of a shopping situation going on. And we're gonna get into it. It doesn't matter. Like like I say, there's some parts of this video that are gonna be like more lighthearted, like the shopping and all of this. And there's other parts that are just not okay, which we're also gonna venture into. Now, if you watch a lot of Radiant Brits coverage on this, she has covered mostly some of the stuff I'm gonna be talking about but I'm just gonna try and come at it from a different angle. I feel like um, there's just so much always to discuss with this family and they do interest me. This is like, it's like the Ciccone Jolies. They interest me. Like I, I don't enjoy her content per se, but I do find the antics interesting and that's why I discuss it. At the end of the day, I like discussing things that interest me on this channel and I've always said that. So if something interests me, I'll chat about it, but it might not always be you know, it might not always be about you know, about getting your kids offline and all of this kind of stuff, because I do think that there is a place for people to have their kids online, just not oversharing and not be the main focal point. And I've always said that. And I think some people get confused as to if I am saying absolutely no children should ever appear online or I'm sort of, you know, I always used to like watching like mummy vloggers, for instance, but I don't like family channels just because the emphasis is much more on the kids than it just being about the mum. So to clarify, that is the issue, okay? And if they start oversharing things and they start filming their kids' breakdowns, medications, um, really personal things where they go to school, um, all this kind of stuff, then that then starts to irk me. It starts to push me towards this is a family channel and I really don't like it. I will happily watch a mummy vlogger for instance who doesn't really show her kids that much but they might feature from time to time. I like that because I can relate to it but as soon as it gets into sharing their kids own personal information that's when I draw back so I'm just going to clarify this right here. I was actually sent an email along with Radiant Brit about this. Um, we were both sent an email basically alerting us to the fact that in one of Alicia's lies, it was like a snack time lie. Um, this is what I'm trying to say. Every single snack time or like in quite a lot of her uploads, seemingly there's nothing really the matter with what's going on until 
you know, until you look a little bit closer and actually there are moments of oversharing like we found with Alicia with the incontinence pads who where she just told everyone that some of her kids wet themselves basically. Um, there was another one where she was talking about her kid, her child's periods and all of this and showing us the type of underwear or whatever. There are just, and, and they are basically encased in very long lives and you might not notice them. And some people go, oh, you have no life. You're just sitting there watching it. And a lot of the time I actually get sent snippets um, and actual timestamps of where these things are happening. So it's not as if I'm literally sat on my bum watching her lives for hours at a time. It's the weird world of YouTube, but those sorts of things happen. And it's quite fortunate because otherwise I probably wouldn't sit through it. One of her lives, she was basically saying that two people dropped by her house and I don't think she even knew who they were and they just wanted to come on and they were like fans of hers, just wanted to stop by and say they're doing a good job. Um, somebody stopped by today, Diana and her husband Sean stopped by today and just gave me, just gave Josh and I like, they're very sweet and just, we're basically like, we just want to stop by and tell you that we're proud of you and you're inspiring and keep going. And we were like, thank you. Because in the world of social media, you get a lot of negativity and a lot of criticism and a lot of hate. So... It was nice to have someone be like keep going and this brings me back to the original point i made on the fact that everyone knows that her house address is on google she's said this several times that she doesn't really see it like she's just given up caring about the whole thing which is scary like this is what i said back when when i made this point of saying people know where she lives she's literally had two people turn up at her front door just to stop by. Imagine, can you, I can't even fathom. I would literally be telling them to go, if someone turned up at my front door, just to tell me what an amazing job, or even to tell me that I'm a horrible human being, because that does sometimes happen on here. I'd be freaked out. Why are you just allowing them? I don't know if she actually allowed them in, but that is weird. And these people found out where they live through Google search. How is Alicia being so like, oh, it was so nice when they came. Does she live in a bubble where like everything is all happy families? Because if people are turning up at her front door, that is a massive safety issue, like massive. Why does she not see an issue with this? At this point, it would be easier if she just moved because then at least no one would work out where they live and things. But I still, I still found that a bit odd. Like, I'm sorry, I did find it a bit odd and you guys can let me know. But if random people were popping up at my house telling me, telling me what a good job I'm doing or telling me what a horrible person I'm doing, I'd be really freaked out. I'd be like, this isn't nice. Like, how did you find out where I live? What's even weirder is that people, people, those people actually thinking that was okay just to like stop by and say hello. Like, I don't know what's weirder. Alicia's non-reaction to it or the people that actually turned up at her front door. Imagine if someone really horrible turned up at her front door. Can you imagine? It doesn't take a genius to work out that that is that is a problem. No, can we agree on that? That is a bit of a problem. The other bits, the other bit that I did get alerted to, and I found this on the subreddit, is I think it was like a past video of Alicia basically there, and she is, she's basically, someone was asking her about one of her kids, and I'm not gonna say which one, asking about one of her kids, um, whatever, and Alicia then basically goes on and gives us a whole bloody spreadsheet, like a whole heap of lists on every single diagnosis that this child has, like everything. And she even said something like, has a low IQ. And it's like, and she sort of paused after she said that. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that she is saying that's a bad thing, just for the record. I'm saying that she shouldn't be telling everyone else. Like this list was so long and it just kept on going. Like how embarrassing, why would you want that? And the thing is, is that, I don't know why, like, who is this helping? Tell me what's right now, who is it helping? Why can't Alicia share her medical information? Because I just, I found that absolutely just twisted. I found it like, why? Like, what is what is the point in you sitting there? And, he's, and she's going, oh, he was really dealt the wrong deck of cards or hand of whatever, whatever, whatever that expression is, you know what I'm talking about. Why would you do that? Like, why would you sit there and just, list out all of this medical information I just don't understand it like why are you telling people this information it's not your information to tell it's literally that child's information and i'm sorry but chances are of the child standing there 
and telling a stranger this information is fairly limited. Like, let's be completely real. This child is not going to turn around and go, hey, yeah, these are all of my problems. Like, these are all my diagnosis. Like, these are all of them. But no one does that. But she doesn't have an issue with doing that about her kid. It makes no sense. And her supporters come over and continuously have a go at me for being mean and saying horrible things. And it's like, Alicia doesn't do herself any favours. I've never once sat here and said, like, commented on, like, her looks or her personality or anything like that. I've never once done that. Um, and I've never, you know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and, like, badmouth her. I badmouth her actions to things. I think that she is a lovely, like, she must be a really, really, really loving person to take in this many kids. I take my hat off to her. I've always said that. But the problem is, is that she doesn't help herself by making these reels with her just literally going, and this child has this, and this child has that, and this child has this, and da, 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 da. And, like, referring to each of her kids as the disability. Like, oh, this is my child, and he has autism. Or this is my child, and she has fetal alcohol alcohol syndrome and stuff like that like that's so unnecessary and the thing is this has become her branding now her branding is shopping which we're going to get into is doing excessive shopping and the fact that she's a foster adopt family and her kids have medical um have these different medical problems issues whatever you want to call it that that is her branding so she's just going to continuously do it and i'm telling you there's something the matter with it why can't she just stick to the mummy morning routines or do a full house clean or i don't know do like a themed grocery haul or do like a grocery haul on a budget or do like just anything or take us around if she's really into shopping just take us around all the different shops i don't understand why why we have to keep on doing this. The thing is, it's not just me, like people see, like it's not just me and Radiant Brit that have problems with this. There are hundreds of other people who watch our videos or who even watch the Doherty Dozen videos or are part of the subreddit group who all think the same thing. But it's only the fact that there's only me and Brit that are actually making videos about this. So, you know, it might look like we're picking on her, but this would just, this, this information that we bring to you is information that has already been bubbling over in different corners of the internet, okay? And there is something the matter with, with sharing this amount of information about your children. She sends her kids off in like full on named backpacks. And you might be wondering, Amy, what's the matter with doing that? Like da 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 da. Problem is with doing that, especially in big cities, if you very, very, very clearly have the name of the child, you could get strangers that could come up. And this doesn't just, this isn't just a thing that is just special to vlogger kids, okay, this isn't. You can have people that will come up and go, oh, I don't know, <clears throat> oh, like little Amy, like, oh, Amy, like, come here. And then, especially if that child may have additional needs or anything like that, they may not realise that this person is a predator, this person is dangerous. And you might, like, I looked on the, I think it was Instagram, and there was this random comment from, there was this comment from this lady who didn't even watch the Doherty Dozen, as she said in a comment down below. And she was basically explaining this. She was saying that um, that it happened in her hometown or it happened to her when she was younger. And then if you then read the comments below, I'll leave all these comments up here so that you can pause it, otherwise this video is gonna be extremely long. Um, yeah, there were people below going, yeah, that happened to me or that happened in my hometown. And it happens all the time. And some people going, oh, don't be so ridiculous. Like, don't be so silly. Like, she knows what she's doing. But she's got so many kids to look after. It would only take a second. It would only take a second for one horrible person for that all to go wrong. It may not happen very frequently, but it's the fact that it does happen. And when it does happen, it's serious and it's scary. You can't run the risk of, oh, it's such a small percentage of it happening. You can't run that risk. And the fact that they're even more well known and that people know their whereabouts and know where they are just makes it more of a risk for people to actually come and try their chances. But then again, then again, people know where they live. So actually they could try their chances at any time, which just makes it even more scary. Yes, the likelihood of it happening is slightly slimmer than me catastrophize, catastrophizing catastrophizing you know what i mean instead of like yes i'm being very worked up about this but the fact is is that if it does happen it's only going to happen once and those consequences can be dire we hear about it on the news we hear about kidnappings all the time we do we hear about it and it actually goes on a lot more than the news can even bring up because half the time they don't even know what's happened to a child and i do get that it's good for the kids to see like which bag is theirs but there are other ways 
of making a child's bag distinguishable rather than literally writing the name of the child in massive colourful letters. So those are my like safety things. All right, so actually getting on onto the shopping because I know that some people think that this is such a moot point, but I have said it before, I cover things that I find interesting and this Alicia spending habits really interest me. I used to watch a lot of, um, it's like super spenders and shopaholics and stuff like that. Like all the TLC, um, TLC and they used to have it on BBC, BBC three as well. They used to have all these different programs and I am obsessed with these kind of programs with people that like hoarder programs as well. I love it. I don't know why I find this interesting. So the fact that Alicia sort of reminds me of some of these people is going to make me want to talk about it because I do find it interesting, but I do also appreciate that different people have different spending habits. Are you ready? Are the people, have the people left that are gonna get offended by what I'm gonna say. This is your cutoff point, okay? Right, okay, so going into the snack bags, the snack bags, for the love of God. So she basically posted this image of like, here's our snack bag or whatever. Bearing in mind, bearing in mind, Alicia did actually do this long, uh, she did this reel of what what is basically in our kids' backpacks. And what it was, was like, if I remember rightly, I think it was like a Nintendo Switch, a tablet, a pair of headphones and then basically a long list, like so many snacks, like so many snacks. Okay, all right, so many snacks with a bag of veggie crisps for health. And so they've already got like a whole like thingy of snacks, which is nice to see that they're actually using some of their snacks that they bought. Um, but then Alicia then has this massive great big suitcase, which is a suitcase just for snacks. There's nothing in there, just for snacks, just for snack suitcase. How long is this flight? This flight, of, I've now realised by reading some of the comments, it's only like 45 minutes. What is even the point? Also, the people on subreddit are absolutely making me cackle because someone had basically made this edit video and I really wish I could ask that person, but I'm not entirely sure how to message people on thingy. So um, I'll leave a couple of shots from it because I'm not quite sure if they want me to include it or not, but they made the most funniest edit of basically Alicia went and spent in the airport. Okay, whenever I go to airport, my head is down because I know that if I go into one of the little like um, shops, I will spend so much money. I spent like a tenner on a book last time I went because it, the cover drew me in. I was like, ooh, like walking like a zombie towards the book sections. Anyway, I try and avoid buying things at airports because it's like this mysterious land where everything costs so much more money. So I'm literally there just like, like I'm not talking about the duty free, I'm literally just talking about like bottles of water and stuff. So I'm literally just like this, like running through. Alicia spends, I think it was like 400 quid just, just in the airport, like just in the airport, just boom. And the things that she buys, she buys gum. She already bought gum. She showed us her buying gum. She then buys headphones, which she'd already shown us. She also already showed us um, her buying water bottles when she did that big shop, the big grocery haul. Phone, Nintendo Switch. And then in this, she's then going and buying bottled water or bottled something, and it's like they already have refillable water bottles why are you buying more plastic crap like i just don't understand it they already have refillable water bottles what's the point oh god i would love to have 400 quid willy-nilly just to spend in an airport thing like if she why is she buying more things in an airport in an airport why is she buying more things like i thought the whole point of her grocery haul and her shopping beforehand was to get everything before they went why do you need more stuff? Like, I don't understand it. And this, this is, it, it, I just think that she just loves to spend money. And don't get me wrong, there are some things like furniture, I can browse, I don't have a lot of money, but I'd love to browse and just buy some new furniture. It's just unnecessary because she already does all these big shops and then she's like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna go and spend another 400 pounds in an airport and it's like, I don't know, I don't know, I just, I just found it odd. Also, her very first vlog that she does when she's in New York is she's doing shopping, going shopping with my 12 kids or something. And it's like, 
I don't know, it's like what the very first thing that you want to do, which bearing in mind, she did actually say that one of the things they like doing when they go away on holidays is they like being able to get a souvenir. And they pick a souvenir for the trip. They all get to go pick one thing as their souvenir from New York City. Let's go shopping. But the thing is, is that they're not going to get, and this is a bit judgmental, like she, they're not actually going to get a souvenir, like something that is just uh, specific to New York. They're actually going to like, going to get Nintendo Switch games and all of that. And it's like, what's the point? Like, what is the point? It's just spending, like they want to get something that, you know, as a token souvenir, but how is a Nintendo Switch game a souvenir? Cause you can get them anywhere. You can actually buy them on Amazon. Like, do you know what I mean? That is me just being picky, nitpicky, but I would have quite liked to have seen them like going and doing some stuff on their holidays rather than it being just a going shopping, doing more shopping and all of this kind of stuff. Because after a while, it's just like, okay, so you went shopping before you before you went away on holiday, you spent like 1600 quid when you already had all these snacks at home. You're then spending $400 in an airport buying things which the kids already had, gum, water and headphones. And then you are now going shopping again to buy more things that you could have bought at home. Do you know what I mean? This is the reason why I think that she does have like this shopping addiction, which we all have our own addictions, don't we? Like, to be honest, we do. Um, but like I say, I do like, he I do enjoy watching all of those like um, programs on like people that can't help but spend loads and loads of money. You know, you have those like, um, what is it called? I think it's actually called like super spenders or something. And you can actually still watch episodes on YouTube where you have people that like go into serious credit card debt because they're just buying like designer outfits like every single day and they just can't stop. So I do actually find those sorts of things interesting. Hence the reason why I cover them. And if she wants to spend $400 in an airport, bloody let her, let her, let her. Cause I kind of enjoy watching it. But at the same time, at the same time, it is extremely wasteful. It is when she could have already bought those things. But I do know that a fair share of people enjoy watching those sorts of things. It is interesting. It's just one of those things, isn't it? This video has been a completely mixed bag. I hope you appreciated it. Um, I just went for a really long walk and I've got loads of horsefly bites all over me. So I'm gonna go have a really quick shower. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. Take care of each other, take care of yourselves and I'll catch up with you guys in the next video.